Hello sir, how are you? Hi. Hi, what's up? How are you? Good, good. I'm really excited to have you here today. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thank you for the opportunity to join this no, dialogue. No, no. It's my, it's my pleasure. It's my pleasure. So, how are you doing in this work from home situation? Uh, honestly, it was frustrating <laughs> in the first week because I am a guy who kind of prefers working at the studio and spending my time there. Um, mm. but it took a while to kind of get away from the distractions at home and uh, focus uh, my energy towards uh, the work. Oh, all right. Okay, so um, uh, guys, everybody knows who uh, Jason is. He is the co-founder of News Lab, and he has done some really amazing work. And I'm sure you have already seen his work in a lot of the uh, platforms. His work has been published in a lot of platforms. So, how News Lab started is such a beautiful story. So, how did the the initial few years of the startup look like for you? Uh, so, initial few years, they were just like. Uh, i mean most startups we were essentially it was just for zafa and myself and we uh worked literally out of my dad's conference room uh but that did help us save up on some initial rent money uh which i think is also a very useful uh, tip or suggestion for anyone if you can save up on that then that's really helpful uh but yeah initially it was two of us and then we had uh, uh an intern join us who is now full time with us bhakti uh and then slowly more people started coming on and then we realized that we are just tripping on top of one another and it was time to kind of move into a space that was our own as well which also brought about more responsibilities and it helped us push ourselves as well so the initial few years were chaotic and in terms of getting work also i mean uh, neither was i for myself we don't come from families or backgrounds where you know we have anyone else practicing architecture but uh it was difficult to get uh projects initially but we kind of reached out to our own families and network within our own friend circle to kind of try and uh get projects and uh, do projects uh, some on barter system to kind of expand our portfolio and um yeah those were the few year the first few years it was kind of a uh, chaotic but fun it was really good yeah yeah so in all of the projects uh the details have been beautifully worked out and one uh, particular design element that i couldn't help but notice was how you used colors to set language for a particular space and you know it's like the uh, color is narrating story for that space so do you have a theory of using colors for a space or something like that so i mean um, i think there is also of course i mean having looked at the colors that are there in our projects it's not that uh, we are averse to using black and white in our spaces or going completely monochromatic we like to do that also and we're hoping to do more of that as well it is just that uh, i think we're very free spirited in the way how we go about using colors we're kind of uh, you know we're not uh, sort of fearful of it we kind of embrace colors and uh, i i think it creates a very happy vibe and so the way we go about it is we don't just look at colors in isolation but the materials and the textures that are with it and then we layer a space it depends what kind of space it is right i mean if it is if it is a more uh, private space like a bedroom then it gets layered more and there are deeper colors you kind of create more intimate spaces if it's a living room slightly more brighter more light filled colors and you know to kind of make it more warm and welcoming space as well essentially i mean people should feel like they're their home so that's why i think the the colors themselves are in a i mean they they have like a party amongst themselves so but but we have um, yeah so we layer the colors and that's how we kind of do it so every project comes with its own set of design brief its own set of challenges and context and every project is unique in its own way sometimes we create something out of the box or sometimes we derive uh, inspiration from the context and sometimes the client is really fussy about a particular detail so uh, is there a particular strategy strategy that you use to approach each design problem uh so i i think for designers everything is sort of i mean every challenge is an opportunity in itself right so uh, i think whether it's a product or a space the overall methodology is sort of similar you start with investigation and exploration 
the the whole idea is to see how you can better a product or a space because i mean you if you had to create the same thing uh then you're not really adding any value to the project or the product uh because there are things out there that definitely some people do it better as well so you have to play to your strengths and sort of that's how we do it so we go through this whole process of looking at the context understanding the user which is a big part of it who is using the space or who is using the product or the object so that's how we sort of go about it looking at the entire understanding the client's brief then doing the investigation and then creating a narrative and sort of building the story around that and then for us the concept becomes the backbone of the entire project we use the concept as sort of our guiding principle and the bible basis which we kind of build the materials and the palette and the detailing and that's how yeah yeah so uh, talking about muse mart which is a furniture and product design venture by muse lab so uh, whether it's a piece of furniture whether it's a product or it's an accessory uh, the details are amazing and your signature style also kind of reflects through those details so what is the story behind creating muse mart so i mean i think uh, when you are doing projects when uh, uh, clients are involved it's you, usually your your narrative or your story is informed by the brief that's given by them and it should i mean at the end of the day you're part of a service industry so you have to respond to the client and how you respond to it that is your kind of signature style to it um so coming back somewhere we kind of realized that you know we needed to do some more explorations research and material explorations and uh wanted to create something that was self propelled something that came from within where we are kind of creating our own brief and then reacting to sort of that so we wanted to set up a brief and parameters for ourselves um and that's when we began really small we began with designing coasters and looking at birch ply as a material to begin with and a lot of our initial products have been using birch ply and that's how we sort of built on that so we wanted to go from a smaller scale to a macro so it's been a natural progression from doing products and now doing some furniture pieces as well right so for interior designers for architects who are passionate about product design or furniture design how do you suggest them to take their passion forward uh i think the only way to do it is to kind of uh, explore as much and create as much as possible i think to look at uh, design opportunities that are out there and create a brief for yourself and prototype 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 i think that's the best way to do it because that be- becomes a good learning experience and it it takes you through an entire cycle of a product and uh, the good thing about products are they they are at least the cycle of creating a product is quicker than a project and you can hold a product in your hand or at least it's 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 a scale that's manageable so i would suggest to start small build on that explore as much as possible and look at all the kind of comp- design competitions that are out there to participate and be part of that and engage with the community in the dialogue that's happening with the design world today and you know that will continue happening as well right 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 all right so uh you know in the pandemic situation that we are in right now uh, it has changed a lot of things for people uh, previously people used to spend most of their day in their workspace and now they it's the opposite so how do you think people are going to perceive spaces differently because of this pandemic situation how do you think what will be the new normal for people now in terms of spaces yeah i, I think that's a dialogue that everyone is reflecting on currently and uh, i think of course you know in su- certain situations we need to hustle and we need to come up with solutions that are quick and you know we need to respond to the given situation as designers we need to come together and i see a lot of people are already doing that uh, we are also trying to do that where you know like how are the future markets going to be you know when you go to buy vegetables or you know you have to also look at the density that we have you know you know, bombay delhi all these cities where the markets are so crowded how are we going to maintain distancing how are things going to be more hygienic so you know from 
uh, looking at the entire supply chain of a vegetable, how that kind of journeys from a farm to the city. Is it going to lead to a boom in, you know, uh, urban farming? Is it going to be the time where, okay, we are like no longer propagating open office plans? So I think, I think there are, it, it opens up a whole uh, box of, you know, opportunities and questions. I think some we are going to, of course, like I said, hustle to, because that's the need of the hour, you know, to respond to that. But some are going to be a little more long term because we will have to see and study how people behave in in this changed or altered new normal. You know, when they step out, how they how are they behaving? You know, initially, of course, people will be a little more, uh, I guess, uh, fearful or you know, afraid of touching surfaces and things like that. They will be a bit more cautious. But it, I think it's it will push us into a much more sort of uh, hygienic kind of environment it has made us all conscious and speaking about homes i think i mean each one of us has been doing the house chores as well and as we are going about doing that we're definitely questioning is this maintenance free why is this so uh, difficult to clean i think we're all appreciating the house help we've had and uh, so i think of course it's going to reflect all of that at all different levels and uh, the only other thing is, I mean, I've, I've been reading about it and, you know, that we're all sort of creating so many, uh, uh, sorry, so many of these, you know, sort of uh, isolation kind of uh, situations, right? And so everyone is going to probably consume more in a certain way. So products delivered will be delivered in a different manner. So I think we have to be very conscious about how these things are going to reach out from the product itself to the package design because are we going to then generate more waste because everyone has their set of gloves and their masks and all and uh, so we have to look at the kind of waste that we will be creating as well and th that's why going back to what I said earlier I think certain things we will have to answer and respond to right away because it's the need of the hour but things that are more long term and the kind of um, environment or changed environment that we are creating for the built environment we have to look at all these other factors to make sure that we are not generating more waste yeah. that's definitely true so we are getting a lot of interesting questions uh, how do you decide how to price a certain design or product how to price it i think that involves definitely uh, you know of course uh, all your material and labor that goes into the product and then uh, this, you know, deciding a certain uh, percentage factor that you want to add on as your design uh, uh, percentage to that mm -hmm. end price. Yeah. All right. Uh, what What is your opinion on post COVID furniture design? Post COVID furniture design. I think the first thing we have to respond to. I mean, what that comes to my mind is either you know, like. Uh, desks and chairs for you know working from home because some you know so far not everyone necessarily had a dedicated space you usually sat with your laptop wherever you know if possible um, but some people do have the luxury or then it comes to a good sort of ergonomic chair that you would like to sit on and that's just in terms of what product but I think it's going to be more about the materiality and you know like is it antibacterial what coating it has on it and things like that so yeah all right uh, when a client is unable to give a strong brief what questions do we ask to get that explicit brief to build on this is a very interesting I think that's a, that's the perfect brief you just get the programmatic brief from them and then you build the qualitative brief you build the story that that gives you an open hand right uh, but yeah i mean so so to uh, if you want to understand their taste, uh, I think the best way is to sort of share some images with them and see how they respond to that. And it's better if you share the images with them as opposed to letting them share. Otherwise, then you'll get a whole uh, Pinterest board that might not just be the best. Yeah, Pinterest infected clients. <laughs> yeah. So do you think of delivering uh, 
one second the questions are, do you think of delivering low maintenance designs or just focus on uh, the concept and aesthetics of the design i i think aesthetics are definitely subjective right uh, but uh, it, it's the concept that matters it, it, irrespective of low maintenance or not uh, so i think uh, it is about the concept and then how the entire process unfolds with the materiality and uh, the brief so i i, I it, everyone i mean i i'm sure as designers we all do uh, from a low budget to a mid budget to a high end high end project so i don't think that that's any sort of a uh, limitation that you know it fact it becomes a, an interesting challenge how do you perceive a building when you uh, visit one and how do you connect to the soul of it wow that it's very <laughs> deep uh, uh, i think definitely in a way lighting effects and uh, the more open spaces it has that's what you know helps connect how how the indoors connect to the outside and how one space flows into the other and for me, i i i definitely always look at thresholds how you move from one place to the other what the doorway is what is the transition point things like that and of course light and uh, open airy spaces yeah so somebody is asking will it be difficult for indian designers when we have this block from getting furniture from china i think again it's the best time to shop within our country there is like a plethora of products and great great design coming out of our uh, you know country itself um, and uh, if you if you just want to look at what's out there you can visit raw collaborative page or website that's a good source to see young indian designers creating great work and putting it out there so that's a good source to begin with yeah the marketing is much important after design product how do you deal with it after you have designed your products how about marketing and spreading out the word <laughs> i i think i wish i was better at that but uh, from what i know i think uh, it it begins with as soon as you're designing the product because you know you're thinking about the story and the narrative so you should be able to kind of also uh, weave that into the marketing aspect so you begin thinking about the marketing on day 1 i think that's a big part of our education that you know that doesn't come through or you know because there's just so much more in terms of technicality and other uh, topics that need to be covered uh, in college this gets left behind so i think like a a business or a marketing course in design and uh, is essential or should be a part of our curriculum right absolutely uh, somebody is asking who do you miss the most in your studio <laughs> there's a conversation going on in the chat <laughs> uh, i think they are misusing your chat box here uh, <laughs> yeah, all of them everyone <laughs> yeah so somebody saying gsa is the answer to that no competition here <laughs> <laughs> The GSA yeah. is my friend's studio in Bangalore, Santosh and yeah. Gaurav. Yeah. yeah, all right. So, uh, how, what skills do you look out for when you're hiring a designer in your firm? Uh, I think eccentricity. <laughs> I think um, I had once attended a Ideos talk in Bombay, and uh, you know, after they gave their presentation, for people that don't know, Ideo is an experience experiential design firm. uh in uh, based out of boston and different parts of uh, the us they also had opened an office briefly in mumbai and the answer, they they were asked the same question and i would give the same answer mutts a mixed breed someone who's not just about architecture and interior and product but you know someone who has varied interests interests beyond you know what is there in front of us usually so i would say like and i think our studio is an example of eccentric sort of eccentricity so yeah i've got a really interesting question if you get the yeah. chance to design any marvel superhero house whom will you choose and why a mario super marvel heroes. superhero marvel marvel <laughs> i i don't know i'm not so crazy about superheroes so i i don't know uh, <laughs> how to 
answer that one. Um, no, yeah, then let's chuck it. <laughs> let's chuck it. Yeah, yeah. I think uh, Nishita Ma'am was asking before uh, to asking you to talk more about your first product that you built. I'm sorry. Uh, Nishita Ma'am had this question before when we were talking about Newsmart. Uh, that tell us about your first product. Tell us more about our your first, first product. First yeah. product. So our first product was a coaster, like I said. So we uh, designed the coaster, and uh, e even though it was just a coaster, and there were four designs, we spent a year of uh, sort of uh, research on it and back and forth and prototyping. Reason being because we had to. Um, so so some of the designs have illusions in them. So we had to keep changing the openings uh, to avoid breakage of the coasters and still keep the coasters at four mm thickness. So yeah, so it was a good learning, but then after that, I think we were quick with the other products. All right. Uh, how do the clients react to an idea of using patterns in the house, like these three D patterns that are coming in now? Yeah. So I think again, it's it it has to be relevant, right? What kind of scenography is the pattern creating? Is the pattern for a screen? Is it on a light? Is it on a fabric? What is it adding or bringing to the project? Um, so it all depends on that. Yeah, yeah I mean, yeah, there are there there are times when clients are averse to patterns, but um, uh, I think it it's a matter of like I said, if it build, if they've sort of already bought into the concept, they'll buy into the pattern as well. So. Right. What is your thought process before finalizing interiors and your preferable vendors for carpet flooring? For carpet flooring, um, so I think for um, sorry, and what was the first part of the question? What is your thought process before finalizing interiors? Thought process. So I, uh, I mean, like I said, um, it's about sort of uh, understanding the client's brief and. Uh, Building on that and narrating a story. Sometimes it's, I, I mean, this is an honest admission. Sometimes the clients are not that excited about the concept. It is for some clients, it's more about just the surfaces and finishes and things like that. But I think we still go about that process for ourselves to sort of believe and buy into the concept ourselves. And um, yeah, so that kind of sums up the process bit of it. But uh, in terms of carpets, I think there are, uh, we have in the past collaborated with man-made uh, carpets. And uh, we also, of course, look at Jaipur rugs for a lot of the carpets as well. Yeah. 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 Somebody's asking furniture, lights, or tiles. What's next on the menu, menu for Newsmart? Furniture, lights, or tiles. Um, so yeah, tiles are definitely coming up. We are working with, uh, even during this time when, uh, um, you know, things are not functional, we have, we have created a, a line of tiles and we are looking to sort of even actually start some of the prototyping soon. So, yeah. Wow. wow. And we have That's created cool. some, we have created uh, cement uh, coasters that also double up as wall tiles. That was in collaboration with uh, Bharat Floorings. Bharat Floorings. Okay. Uh, somebody wants to know about the work process of your firm. The work With process. This, yeah, how you and your team work. <laughs> I don't know if that can be summed up. Uh, it is chaotic, but it it it. Yeah, uh, I think it's a lot of fun. I I mean, I think the process we all know, but it's 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 a lot of fun, and. Uh, I, I guess I will admit it. I'm the one who sometimes has to be like, okay, come on, now we need to get going. We have a, you know, sort of a, um, need to focus. Yeah. How do you maintain a barrier between personal choices and favorites while designing something for someone else? That's a good question. Um, yeah, no, that's a good question. So like I said, I think our um, personal choices uh, and favorites, we, uh, of course, I mean, it's, it's difficult, but one has to filter that. You don't just necessarily push things for the sake of pushing it or, you know, sort of specifying it. It has to, so a good reminder is to constantly go back to the concept that was created. If it doesn't fit with that, if it doesn't check a box there, then it doesn't fall, then it doesn't work. Yeah, yeah, abs absolutely, absolutely. Um, 
we are getting lots of questions lots of questions right now what has been your most challenging part i have been answering people questions before so <laughs> <laughs> all right now i understand which has been your most challenging project yet yet which has been your most, most challenging, challenging project yeah i think it's yet to come or i guess it will be now in this new sort of normal where it's not just about the architectural services that uh, uh, you know one is kind of providing it is also more about human behavior which it always has been but i think we're all going to be looking at it with a completely different lens now so i think uh, the challenging projects are yet to come and uh, we're looking and hoping to do some public projects as well which i think would be challenging in an interesting way because it's not just about a private user or you know a limited um, kind of uh, user experience a public project is much more interesting because you have different number of people and from different backgrounds and demographics all using the same space so uh, i am interested in product design after b arc what should i do um so i think like i said i mean i think uh, there's nothing stopping you can start a uh, uh, kind of uh, designing now itself um from home and looking at you i mean if you need there are lots of online courses as well in furniture design that can be taken up and now's the time to do it and uh, yeah i think there's nothing stopping if if you've taken up architecture it doesn't mean you have to become an architect Obviously. um there are famous fashion designers who've done architecture but they're not practicing that so yeah yeah absolutely that is something that we need to get out of it uh, if i've done a degree in something that doesn't mean that i have to stick into that profession for the rest of my life yeah yeah absolutely. no not at all absolutely so i sorry i i read rohit boite's question if he he's asking me we are going to be designing swings i think nishita will kill me if i design a swing So Rohit, you have to get a swing from Nishita. <laughs> yeah. So Saloni is asking, your style is often addressed as maximalist. Were you always a maximalist, or you grew into it? What was the journey like? Uh, yeah. I think um, naturally we are maximalist. We kind of, cause, I mean, we gather things. Of course, we try to declutter. But I think, uh, I think. as a team or as a bunch or a group of people we really love objects and everything that is to do with objects and uh, therefore a lot of our uh, projects are layered with a lot of accessories and things like that and um, i think those are the things that sometimes bring life to a project as well so it is absolutely necessary um, but yeah uh, tell us more about your furniture line Nishita Ma'am is asking. Our furniture line. Oh, okay, yeah. great. Thanks, Nishita. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So our our first uh, furniture line is again uh, uh, inspired by a box of chocolates. The whole idea oh. was that yeah, the whole idea was that you know there is one piece for each one within the box. So one piece might appeal to you, one might not. It's just like when you get a box of chocolates, everyone goes for you know like if you have a quality street. everyone goes for their color kind of so that's what was the kind of uh, starting point um the thought behind the collection and we just wanted to have fun with it at the same time um we also wanted to kind of explore different techniques so if you look at each piece it's very different like there is one piece called the disc where um uh, there are metal arms that are holding up a table and it's actually hand beaten into position we thought we'll do the bending on the machine but we don't have access to like four access routers and things like that within bombay and so that was not possible so that's actually been hand bent and beaten into shape yeah. so wow. like that with each piece we've tried to kind of layer it with a different detail and develop that yeah, yeah right. how do you uh, deal with a creative block that is a problem a lot of people face actually now Yeah yeah definitely I mean I think there are times when sometimes you get an idea right away and sometimes it's at the nth minute and it of course at the last minute then you don't have a choice uh but sometimes good uh, ideas come at the last minute as well and uh if there's a creative block I think the best thing is to talk to people 
and uh, you know have a dialogue and discuss it with someone and their feedback or you know something might trigger when you talk to them so yeah i think that's how we do it at least yeah is there a timeline that you adhere to while designing interiors or each project has different timelines the initial stage especially so no so at least for interior projects uh from the time of getting the project to the planning conceptualizing creating uh um sort of uh, the design drawings and uh, the entire working drawings uh that's roughly depends on the scale of the project and the also you know the kind of time that we have but we say anywhere between 4 to 6 weeks that's the time that we of course when it's a uh, uh, required we do kind of uh, uh, compress that timeline to about 4 weeks but it at least 4 weeks to 6 weeks is a fair enough timeline for that right what does color mean to you what does color mean to you i think color to me means free spirited and uh, you know you're not sort of afraid kind of it it's it's very it's a happy feeling and i think that comes through in most of our projects absolutely completely agree with that i guess we have had some great questions um people are chatting <laughs> over here yeah i think i think that's a good one but uh, so i i actually had a question for you how did you get into this and you know So what for are you me, learning out of it, and how are you carrying all of this back to your practice? Maybe you can share that with everyone. Um, actually, I started this as a blog. Honestly, uh, I was practicing. I did my first project during my internship, and I worked with a lot of my seniors. So during my masters, also I was working with them just to get that extra, you know, exposure of how things work and how. things are actually uh, in real uh, pro- when we do projects and when i actually started practicing i used to write blogs for the same for example um, the first blog i wrote was on how uh, different types of sofa styles that are there because my first individual project was with a lady who wanted red uh, living room with brown leather furniture so that's how i ended up creating a blog and then i started creating blogs on how dealt i i dealt with certain clients and then the kind of response i got that was so overwhelming and i realized that you know i didn't know i was creating so much of an impact with my blogs so i turned it into a proper website a plot, proper instagram page you know with all the color palettes and everything and then i started this as a proper sort of an e-learning sort of a platform this is what basically this is and what i'm trying to do here is that i document the process and i help people learn those things as well because not everybody has to do it the hard way and not everybody gets to land a good office that's a big problem but everybody right. gets can learn these things virtually right. because we have lots of dialogues in delhi in mumbai in hyderabad in bangalore but people who are in tier 2 tier 3 cities like me they can't reach those places every time but they still deserve the chance to you know explore and learn new things so that is what i intend from this platform and that is what i i kind of take away from all these conversations <laughs> yeah no, that's great and i and i think that writing is very sort of important yeah. even within design so absolutely it's yeah uh, how we it, It, it just gives you an expression of how we explain things to the client as well it's not just about writing it gives you an expression yeah, yeah. absolutely i think we had the questions are the architect or designer you are inspired by the architect or designer that i'm inspired by yeah so uh definitely byark uh inspired by byark um uh, also uh initially was very inspired by steven hall's projects and i think i still am of his uh, smaller scale projects not so much with uh, the larger projects um but uh, yeah and design a design firm that i really look up to is avroco there is a new york based design firm they focus is more on uh, um interior projects and products but it's a complete boutique experience and uh, what's interesting is that they also started their own uh, uh, line of restaurants which is completely designed by them so they have the control of food even the cutlery the the tableware all of it is under their control and so you get a holistic product mm. yeah. okay 
Yeah. What was your lowest budget project and how did you do it? <laughs> I think lowest budget <laughs> project may have been um I think we still I I'm trying to recollect which one but there've been quite a few but yeah I think they've been in the range of about 2 and a half thousand to 3000 rupees a square foot um some time back um and uh, yeah I mean it's you you have to look at how did I mean it may not have so much uh, detailing in terms of uh, um patterning but more the essential details that are required and then it's also about materials right i mean if you can't uh, fit in a veneer within that budget then you go to laminates so that's how yeah right right absolutely i think we have had our questions okay. yeah just one last question about the the name muse lab how did th- this name come out this is one last question we're going to take yeah so i i think we were uh, we were of course we uh, trying to figure out and we didn't want it to be a namesake firm um because uh, we believe that everyone sort of is a part of the firm and it's everyone's firm in that sense whoever is part of muse lab and uh the idea is that for any project or anything you you're always looking for some form of inspiration and uh, there is a muse there so that's how muse came about and the uh, lab because it's it's kind of a a space that's constantly creating and coming up with things and uh, therefore we came about with news lab we did have news kitchen that was also a thought but then we thought we'd be mistaken for being a restaurant yeah. or a cafe yeah. and uh, therefore we stuck to uh, news lab hmm. yeah. a lot of people are asking the name of the new york firm that you just talked about they didn't get it's the name avroko avroko a v r o k o I'll just write that down. Uh, yeah, I've written this down in the comment section. All right, thank you so much for being here in this live session. We have got thank some really amazing insights. It was nice meeting you today, and uh, wishing everybody a healthy and happy and productive time ahead in this lockdown period. Thank you so much, sir, for being here. I had a great time today. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Bye, 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 guys. Bye.